So we're continuing our teaching on Daniel and the spirit of excellence. This is the part four of part five. I lost count. Um, Daniel and the spirit of excellence. The Bible says in Daniel chapter six, verse three, I'm not going to read, but let me just catch the phrase. Let me just bring out the phrase that we've been working on the whole time. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, the word of God says that an excellent spirit was in Daniel. An excellent spirit was in Daniel. Our goal is to dig deeper into the character of Daniel to see what made him excellent and how we also can become excellent. Daniel was excellent in all his ways. He was diligent. He paid attention. He did not take things for granted. He was dependable. He was reliable. His character was impeccable. Amen. His enemies could not find any fault in him. They tried but could not find any fault in him. If you ask me, was he a human being? Yes, Daniel was a human being just like you and I. Amen. He delivered according to expectation. He was dependable. He went all out. Daniel went all out and performed above and beyond his peers. He did not do things half-heartedly. He was loyal to God. He had a clean spirit. Somebody say clean spirit. He had a clean spirit. He had pure motives. Hallelujah. I, I, I believe that your heart is yearning for some of these qualities. He had a clean spirit. He was holy, consecrated, dedicated, devoted to the Lord. And he had pure motives. And I pray right now that this will be you in the name of Jesus. That God will see you, when God looks at you, he sees purity. He sees integrity. What is outside is what is inside as well. In this whole series, we are being challenged to think excellent thoughts. We are being challenged to speak excellently. We are being challenged to worship excellently, to give God excellent praise. When it comes to praising God, you praise God excellently. When it comes to worshiping God, you worship God excellently. You go all out and leave no stone unturned. When it comes to loving, you love excellently. When it comes to work, you work excellently. You approach your job with an attitude of excellence. When we live our lives that way, the world will look at us and give glory to God. The world will look at us and they will say, wow, God is good. Amen. They will give glory to the Lord that we serve. Our Father in heaven will look down on us and smile. And when we show up in heaven, we'll be greeted with the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's rest. Beloved, this is our pursuit. If, we don't, if you don't desire this, I don't know what else we would desire in life. We want to desire that when God looks down on us, he will smile with a smile of approval. And when we get to the throne room of God, the throne of God, he will say, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's rest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I yearn for this spirit. I yearn for this spirit. I desire this spirit like never before. I mean, I, I, may, I may have spent January up until September not being excellent, but from this time on, I am drawing the line that I will pursue excellence. I will pursue excellence with everything that is within me, and God will find me faithful. I pray that is you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that over your life. So last week, <clears throat> we started to talk about Daniel chapter 2, 
we're going really slow. And um, we went into the chapter two of Daniel. We learned a few things. We learned that King Nebuchadnezzar had some disturbing dreams and he gave all the wise men in Babylon a charge. He said, I need you to tell me my dreams that I dreamt about, things that I dreamt about, and I need you to interpret them to me or you will get executed. Then we also learned that Daniel heard about the warning. Remember, he was one of the wise men. So he heard about the charge and the challenge and then the king's demand. And when he heard about this, he did a few things. I don't want us to just tell the story and leave the lessons behind. We want to learn the lessons. We are taking Daniel's character apart so we can learn the things that made this man so excellent. When he heard the king's demand, he went into the palace and he asked for time. He said, give me time and I will tell you what you are asking about. I will deliver. Give me time and I will deliver. And I know what was going on in his mind was that, hey, I have been working with God all these years. God has always been faithful. There is no reason God will not be faithful this time around. So I can put my last dollar, I can put my last breath on God's faithfulness. Beloved, that is how faithful our God is. You can, you, can, you can bet your last breath on God's integrity and God will come through. Hallelujah. And so he was bold enough to go into the king's palace. He asked for time. And then he, after that, he went home and asked his friends, his three friends, to agree together and pray. Amen for God to grant them mercy and reveal their dreams to them. And God came through as they expected and as they believed. God is a, a person, let me use that, God is a being that comes through for us. He will come through for you. He will. I don't know about the disappointments you had in the past, but God will come through. So they, they did a corporate prayer. During that same night, God revealed the dreams and his interpretation to Daniel in a vision. And Daniel did a spectacular praise. He praised God like never before. He praised God in a very beautiful way. I would like you to go back to Daniel chapter two and look at it. We read it last week. We're not gonna read it again, but look at Daniel's formula of praise. He listed back to God everything he did for him. He said, Lord, you are faithful in doing A, B, and C. You have done C, D, and E. You have done X, Y, and Z, and I give you praise. Hallelujah. And that is what we know about God. Beloved, the information that, you know, um, this is like a summary and I can I really can go through all of it but I want us to make progress because I want us to move on um, after after he praised the Lord he went into the palace to tell the king to bring the the news to the king about his dreams and the interpretation of the dreams hallelujah so I want us to continue from the 26th verse um, 26 verse of Daniel uh, chapter 2. 26 verse of Daniel chapter 2. It says, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? It's like saying, Are you sure you are able to deliver? <laughs> because all the wise men went into hiding. Are you sure all the sorcerers, magicians, they all went into hiding? Are you sure you are able to deliver? And Daniel's answer is in um, 27. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king had demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians and the soothsayers 
cannot declare to the king. No one, none of these people can come up with the answer. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Hallelujah. But there is a God. Somebody said, but there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. There is a God in heaven who heals incurable illnesses. There is a God in heaven who answers questions, who delivers, who brings solutions to complex problems, problems that are too complex for man to solve. There is a God in heaven. Beloved, the excellence that we are seeking, there is something that Daniel did over here. The excellence that we are seeking to exhibit is not so that we will be recognized. It is not for your recognition, for people to call you excellent and for you to be proud that you are excellent. No, that is not the purpose. That's not the point. The point here is that the excellence that we are seeking is for God's recognition. It is for God to be praised. You will do the excellent act, but it is God that will be praised as a result. In this year of excellence, we're not trying to be excellent so people can sing our praises. Our biggest reward for being excellent is that God will be glorified. Hallelujah. You want to be excellent so God will be glorified. The purpose of excellence is to glorify the name of the Lord and to win the world to the kingdom of God. For a moment, the king thought that Daniel was coming to showcase himself. He asked Daniel, are you able to do this? But before the king could finish, Daniel corrected him. He set the records right. It is not about me. This is not coming from me. There is a God in heaven who is going to reveal these secrets to you. He is going to give you the interpretation you have been looking for all along. Beloved, if we must pursue excellence, we must pursue it for the glory of God. Always put God on the spot. I mean, always put God on, on, on the platform to receive the reward for your excellence. So long as it's about his glory, God will deliver. That is one thing I know about God. If you make it about him, consider it done. Amen. That's a good point to note. Anytime you want something to be successful, put it on God's reputation and God will deliver because he will never fail. He will never be unfaithful. Anyway, so Daniel narrated the dream to the king. I'm not reading everything because if we want to read, we may not finish. Um, he narrated the dream to the king so beautifully, and then he interpreted it and made sure that the king knows it is coming from God. I'm only a vessel. I'm only a channel. I'm only an instrument in the hands of the Lord. Hallelujah. And after this, the Bible says in verse 46 to 49, Daniel chapter 2, 46 to 49. 46 to 49, it says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face. Praise God. Hallelujah. When I, I read this, it sounds to me like um, a, a, the headline of a national newspaper. Okay, the headline of the national newspaper, the, the Babylonian Times. King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face because kings don't bow down. Kings don't bow down to their subjects. But on this fateful day, King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face. It is headline news. He fell prostrate before Daniel and he commanded that they should present an offering and an incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Hallelujah. This is what you want the world to be saying. Beloved, this is what we want the people of the world to be saying about God whenever they see us, whenever they interact with us, 
whenever they hear us, whenever they watch us, whenever they hear us, they should be saying, God is the God of gods. He is the Lord of kings. He is a revealer. He is truly awesome. <clears throat> Amen. What is your personal name for God? What has God done for you? The king said that he's a revealer of secrets. Amen. God likes to hear people confess his name and what he has done. Okay, the songwriter said that you are a way maker, miracle worker, you are a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. I don't know about you. Maybe he is your healer. I don't know what God has done for you. Looking back at where you came from and where you are now, what is your personal name for God? <clears throat> Maybe he is your protector. When you see, when you were told that your days were numbered, amen, you were told by the doctor that your days were numbered, numbered and yet you are still alive here today. Maybe he, you call him your healer, amen. Maybe you call him your deliverer, your, your promoter. He, he may be your provider because there was a time in the past when, I mean, the, you had the last meal on the table and you thought that was the end of your road. Maybe so God is your provider in that sense. We need to identify some personal names for God so that he is not just the God of our fathers, but then he is my God. Amen. I want us to go continue reading. Um, where did we get to? He is the revealer of secrets. So we are actually in verse 47. Since you could reveal this secret. Let's go to verse 48. We're reading to verse 49, which I think is the end. Now, then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts. And he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. I understand there were about 120 administrators or wise men, you know, 120 leaders. They may be senators or you know, congressmen or regional ministers. And then out of the 120, there were three presidents. And out of the three presidents, Daniel was the head. He became, and this is a person who is a, a, a captive of war, a refugee. No, not, not even a refugee. A refugee would mean that he came by himself, right? He was captured and brought into a foreign land and he rose to the very top. I pray that whatever your past has been, whatever your history has been, if you follow these principles, we will see you at the very top of what God is doing. Amen. I would, I would expect to see you at the very top of what God is doing in our world. Now, so um, verse 49, also Daniel petitioned the king and, the, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Love it. Daniel sat in the gate of the king. These are some of the reasons that Daniel was described as having an excellent spirit. When a problem arose, he did not run, he rose to the occasion. Whenever a problem arises, we must rise to the occasion. Two, he demonstrated unwavering faith, an unwavering faith in God. And he took up the fight on his knees. Praise the Lord. Daniel fought on his knees before he went to fight in reality. So we must learn to take up our fights on our knees first, and then we can fight in real life. He made sure to shine the light of God in the palace. Whenever we are given the microphone, whenever we are given the, 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 the podium, whenever we have the opportunity, can we shine the light of God? Amen. 
I know you will be given the opportunity in the future. I just want to ask of you, whenever you have the opportunity, shine the light on God first and not on yourself. Amen. And then when he did that, he put up an unparalleled performance. He was outstanding in what he was asked to do. Amen. He, he delivered outstandingly. He delivered far beyond expectation. He was, and then he was elevated by God, promoted by the king. That is my prayer for everyone that's listening. Beloved, some people in our society think that Christianity is for losers. Some people think Christianity is for weak people, feeble people. But it's time to prove the world wrong. It is time to outperform the world. It is time to excel and prove the world wrong in their misconceptions about Christianity. Some people think Christianity is for weak people who cannot face life by themselves, sensational people who cannot think and engage in intellectual pursuits or think, you know, compete for political office or start a business and do well. I'm challenging somebody today. We need to show the world what our God is made of. Our God is a God of excellence. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. Powerful in engineering and powerful in spirituality, powerful in politics, powerful in economics and finance. Our God is all-powerful, omnipotent. Please carry the image of God wherever you go and show the world what our God is made of. Be the best mother you can ever be. Be the, when the, 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 if your city is looking for the best mother to teach other mothers, let them come to you. Hallelujah. Be the best and show the world what our God can do. That is what Daniel did. And just after King Nebuchadnezzar fell down, prostrate, and worshipped the God of Daniel, and he did something surprising. Next, I, I was so shocked by what he did. And let's read about that briefly in Daniel chapter 3, and then we will, move, we will end there and continue uh, next week. The same king who just bowed down and worshipped the Lord and went ahead and made, he went, went ahead and then he made an image. He made a golden image just after laying down and worshiping God. You know, one of the things that Daniel told him, I'm, I'm actually going to tell you this story. Daniel told the king that his kingdom represented gold. He, the, the king saw a, um, um, an, an image of gold, okay, a statue of gold. And then he said that his image, his kingdom, represents the gold in the dream. But then his kingdom will not last forever. There will be another kingdom that will be inferior to his kingdom that will come, that will overthrow his kingdom. And the king didn't like that. The king didn't like the fact that his kingdom is not going to last forever. If you are a person in any position of authority, I just want to inform us that our kingdoms will end at some point. Amen. <laughs> our kingdoms, our respective kingdoms will end at some point. So this king was trying to fortify himself so that his kingdom will not end. And let's just jump to Daniel chapter 3 verse 4 and... Um, when he made the image of gold, this is what he said. He gathered all, actually, before I read it, he gathered all the rulers, the district rulers, the regional rulers, he, uh, state rulers, the cabinet rulers, national rulers. He gathered the entire, I mean, rulers from the whole nation to come together and then dedicate this image that he made. He wanted everyone in the nation to know that he is still in charge. And in verse, um, Daniel 3, verse 4, he said, Then a herald, an announcer, 
cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, harp, and lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. That was the king. The, the, the king that was just worshiping a moment ago, <laughs> now making an image for people to worship, forgetting that God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings. It is apparent that the king was not happy about the fact that his kingdom will pass away. And I, I'm, I'm not going to unpack this at this point. I just want us to ponder over where we are standing at. You can be standing on a pedestal at one time and the next moment you are wallowing in sin. You can be living a holy life at one point and the next moment you are living a shameful life. And so it is not like, I mean, we, we, we talk about, we, it's not like you, we have, you are holy perpetually, but then the Christian life is a, a, a day by day, moment by moment um, effort. We cannot actually liken ourselves to King Nebuchadnezzar in this case, because he is an, uh, a king of an idol worshiping nation anyways. But I just want to admonish us that while you are standing, the word of God says that take heed, take heed while you are standing, lest you fall. Amen. Um, there's so much to learn in this, in this word, in this story, in this wonderful book of Daniel. And um, I want you to read ahead of us as we proceed in chapter 3 and then chapter 4. We are going to end our journey in chapter 6. Um, and um, I'm going to try to fast, fast track so that we don't spend too many weeks doing this. Uh, so please read ahead of us. But I want you to say a prayer for yourself right now and say, Lord, help me that in any sphere of life that I find myself, that I will excel to glorify your name. In any sphere of life that I find myself, Lord, anywhere that I go, everywhere that I am seen, may I be a true, honorable representation of your glory and what you can do in the life of a person. May I point the glory to you. May I point people to you. May people run to you because of me. Put me, Lord, on, 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 uh, as a monument of your praise. Set me as, as a monument of your praise. Beloved, this time is not a time to go into hiding. It is time to come out and shine the light of God in our society. So ask for God to give you the grace to go out there and excel so the world will glorify God. Ask that grace right now. Ask for that grace. Ask for that grace. Ask for that grace. Ask for that grace. Lord, help us. May we go out there and shine the light on you. May we go out there and cause kings to bow down to you. May we go out there and excel so much that the secular world will come running after you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that's listening to me. Lord, that they are infused with the power of excellence. Lord, that they are full of the spirit of excellence. They will go out there, Lord, to showcase your goodness and your mercy. In the name of Jesus, they will showcase your perfection and excellence in a dark world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making us instruments and agents of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior this morning, you want to start a journey with the Lord, just say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for, to change my life, Lord. 
I repent from my past. I turn away from my old way of life. I ask you, Lord, to become the Lord and Savior of my life. Make me your child. Write my name in the book of life. May I spend eternity with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. And I, I just encourage you, if you pray that prayer, reach out to us, send us a message. We would love to um, uh, live the Christian life with you, alongside you, hold your hand, and then work, work together in our pursuit of excellence.